take away. Thanks for having me. Professor Rose, I want to start with you. You were actually part of a um, movement to reform policing or an effort to reform policing well before 2020 when you served on the White House Commission for 21st Century Policing Reform during the Obama administration. Can you tell us any of the key recommendations of that report that have actually um, been implemented, that we've, that we've seen take effect over this, this past decade? I think what we were trying to do, it was a you know, multi-faceted group of people, including police executives, like Brian Stevens and you know, other of our um, activists still out there on the streets. Um, we're trying to come up with some low-hanging fruit um, recommendations about accountability, independent prosecutors, uh, for the kinds of act uh, activities you're, you're talking about, changes in police training, thinking about ways in which uh, police could better protect demonstrators, First Amendment rights, all of those recommendations were in um, that report. And I do think there were some uh, initial take up of those recommendations, but then we had an intervening four year period uh, of the Trump administration, which halted a lot of support for those changes federally and left it to the states to make or try to make some changes. So some of those changes, Professor Mears, were made after 2020. We saw some states change their use of force standards, some established um, a duty for police officers to intervene, which is part of what, you know, just sort of being uh, trusted in this moment, um, with the three other officers in the show we case. I'm wondering if those um, post-2020 changes have, have caused any real effects in, in how policing um, feels to people on the ground. It's a really important question, Melissa, and it's a difficult one to accept. Let me just run it down quickly for you. Um, in the last six or seven years, um, we have had something like 25 states make changes roughly in three areas. Use of force, as you mentioned, limitations on deadly force, specifically 
criminal justice reform, common sense criminal justice reform that is backed by a wall of evidence, it has pit that against public safety without any evidence. Professor Mears, I want you to take this piece that Nia is giving us around the culture of policing, even the, the dishonesty in policing, and, and connect it with the pieces you were talking about around action policy, even low-hanging fruit, you know, nearly a decade ago, right, in the attempt to move towards police reform. What is possible at this moment? Yeah, a couple of things. I mean, I think the point Mia makes about lies is definitely true. I'll, I can give you another example. The Supreme Court has, mul in multiple occasions, actually sanctioned the ability of police to lie 